Hello! Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to be making the best combined 11 in every single Euro 2024 group. Now this might not be the absolute best combined 11 because I'm giving myself one massive rule. To make this more interesting and fun and to include every single country in this video, I'll be selecting no more than three players max per country. And since there will be 11 players, that means one of the countries in each group will only feature two players. Gotta show all the teams some love. It would be a bit boring to mostly include England players, for example, in Group C. But regardless, of course, we're bound to have some disagreements and I might miss out on some player that you think should have definitely made my combined 11 for each group so let me know in the comments below i did this a while back for the world cup and also for the euro qualifiers and you guys really seem to enjoy both of those videos so of course i'm bringing it back make sure to drop an early like on this video and subscribe if you're new as i'll be releasing a lot more euro content to come until the tournament begins you know what if this video hits 4,000 likes i'll do it for the copa america as well anyway let's get into it starting off with group a this group has a lot of quality obviously we've got germany hungary scotland and switzerland Lots of great individual players from each of these nations. Now, in goal, I think it's definitely fair to take Summer. An incredible replacement for Onana at Inter Milan, leading his club to absolute glory so far in the Serie A. 17 clean sheets so far in 28 matches. And let's not forget his incredible heroic efforts in the last Euro tournament. He's a massive reason why Switzerland were able to make such a deep run all the way to the quarterfinals and getting knocked out to Spain on penalties. Prior to that, he was a major reason why they advanced over France in the round of 16. He's an icon for the national team and he's still shown so much quality, so 100%, I think he should be the goalkeeper pick. With the two center backs, I'm gonna go for the Hungarian Orban and Akanji from Switzerland. Now, Switzerland did have some defensive blunders in the later stages of the Euro qualifiers, like conceding three goals to Belarus, but it seemed to be just a fluke and some improper tactics. I definitely think Akanji is still a quality player. He's also been utilized a lot for Manchester City so far this season. Orban definitely is one of Hungary's greatest defenders. Unfortunately, he missed a lot of matches this season due to a massive injury, but his presence for the national team in the Euro qualifiers were massive. Before he got injured, they only conceded one goal against Serbia. In the second half of the qualifier campaign where he didn't play any of the matches they conceded in every single one. He didn't play in either of those friendlies recently, but I still think he should be the main choice for this video. And if it's not obvious already, I'm trying to save my German picks for later. For the fullbacks, I think it's the perfect opportunity to utilize those Scotland picks. I'm gonna go for Robertson on the left, of course, and on the right, Nathan Patterson. Robertson has gotten really unlucky with injuries this season. Hopefully he will be fit for the Euro campaign. And Nathan Patterson isn't actually Scotland's first choice. I would have gone with Aaron Hickey instead, but he has gone through a massive hamstring injury. He's been out for five months so far, and his presence for Euro 2024 is still in question. But Scotland have a lot of incredible fullbacks so I don't think it's a crime to choose Patterson for now. Now the two picks for center defensive mid, again, don't worry, I will be saving my picks for Germany later. I'm gonna go with Jaka from Switzerland and McTominay from Scotland. McTominay was one of the most crucial players in the Euro qualifiers for his national team. Scoring seven goals in the campaign as a midfielder definitely deserves some praise. Jaka delivers some of the best passion for the Swiss national team. He's been extraordinary, of course, in that incredible Bayer Leverkusen side. I think it's a no-brainer of a pick considering the Swiss options we have. Now for the three center attacking mids, I'm gonna go for the Hungarian Sobozlai, of course, and then Finally, two Germans, we've got Musiala and Wurz. Sobozlai undoubtedly the most popular Hungarian player at the moment, and Wurz and Musiala have been the two most exciting youngsters that have also proven to be potentially the best players for the German national team. And then up top for my final player, I gotta choose somebody from Germany, Fulkrug. 19 direct goal contributions so far in the Bundesliga in 26 matches, massively improving his form over the last few years. And yeah, I think this is the best possible combined 11 in terms of injuries and the rule I've given myself of three players max per country. Let's move on out to what many consider the group of death, Group B, with Croatia, Italy, Spain, and Albania. In this group, to get the best out of every position, I'm gonna do the 4-3-3 with two center defensive mids. In goal, I think we gotta go for an Italian. Shout out to Vicario this season, but I'm still gonna stick with Donnarumma. I've noticed a lot of people have been trying to write him off recently since he hasn't really been living up to the hype ever since the last Euro campaign, but he's still a fantastic keeper, and I think one of the best options we have in this group. For that back four though, I'm going to make it as diverse as possible. One player for each country. Starting off with that center back duo, I'm going for Gvardiol and Bastoni. These two are definitely the future for both of their national teams. A right back, I think it's the perfect opportunity to take an Albanian. So I'm going for Hisai. He's one of their most experienced players who might not be at his peak anymore, but definitely has what it takes to thrive for the national 
national team. And at left back, I cannot ignore many of these amazing Leverkusen players this season. I'm going for Grimaldo. Now for the midfield, there's so many incredible options from each of these teams, obviously. And I've already gone for two Italians, so I'm going to lay off the likes of Barella, although he's absolutely class. For the two center defensive mids, I'm going to go with Rodri and Brozovic. Rodri at the moment is one of the best center defensive mids in the world. Brozovic, although he has gone to Saudi Arabia, is one of the most energetic midfielders on the Croatian national team. He set records at the 2018 and 2022 World Cup, covering the most distance on the pitch out of any player. And then for a midfielder, of course, I'm going to be going for Luka Modric, one of the greatest midfielders ever, of course, not starting every match for Real Madrid these days. They're planning for the future, obviously, and this is his last year for the club, but he always gives it his all for the national team, and I do not see him declining in this tournament. At left wing, I will be selecting Chiesa. Obviously, a lot of his incredible memories have been lived on through the last Euro tournament, but he is a national team icon already. And if he's fit, I definitely see him having the other team struggle in this group. There might be some disagreements on this one, but at striker, I'm going to go for Morata. He had a shocking display in the last Euro tournament, but recently his form has been very solid for Atletico Madrid. And then at right wing, I have to choose an Albanian player. I am going for Asani. This guy plays in the Korean League, but he was so immense in the Euro qualifiers that I cannot ignore him. Of course, Broya is more well known, but he did not participate in the Euro qualifiers at all. And as soon as Albania brought him back on the national team for those recent friendlies, they started losing again. So I don't know, this guy could be an absolute surprise at this Euro tournament though. My picks are definitely debatable for this group because all of these teams have so much quality. It is considered the group of death for many. So let me know what you would change. Moving on to Group C with Serbia, Slovenia, England, and Denmark. In order to utilize some of the best players, I am going to be going for three in the back. Starting off in goal, it is an absolute no-brainer, Oblak. This will be his first ever Euro tournament, and he is one of the best goalkeepers in this generation. Now for the center backs, I'm going to be choosing two Danish players and one Slovenian. We've got Christensen, Biol, and Andersen. Maybe some of these are not the absolute best choices we should be taking, but we got to save our England picks for later. And definitely got to save our Serbia picks because their defense has been shocking lately. The two center mids, it's got to be Jude Bellingham on England, and then of course the Serbian Milinkovic Savic. No doubt about it, Bellingham has been one of the best signings this season. It would be absolutely criminal to leave him out of this team. And Milinkovic Savic is absolute quality, although some people have forgotten about his brilliance since he has gone to Saudi Arabia. At left midfield, I'm taking the Serbian Dusan Tadic. He's had numbers better than most players in the Eredivisie, and he's continuing to ball out at Fenerbahce, one of the most incredible playmakers and is not slowing down. On the right, I will be selecting Saka. Maybe debatable because some people will be going for Foden on this pick instead. I don't think either are wrong answers though, to be honest. And then for the center attacking mid, I will be selecting Christian Eriksen. Many people might be disagreeing with this pick because Obviously, he's aging quite a bit, not his prime anymore. Denmark do have a lot of other interesting midfielders that are coming up. Christian Eriksen is also definitely not a consistent starter for Manchester United at the moment. But he's still an absolute icon for the national team, despite missing pretty much the entire Euro 2020 campaign. And then being part of that very disappointing World Cup 2022 squad. I don't know, my Danish friends, let me know if this was the wrong pick, but I'm going to select him for now. But yeah, up top, I'm 100% going for Harry Kane, and he'll be partnered with Dusan Vlahovic. 40 direct goal contributions in the Bundesliga so far in 26 matches for Kane. Moving on out to Group D, we have France, Austria, Netherlands, and Poland. To get the best possible players again, I'm going to be going for a three in the back formation. In goal, zero question about it, we're taking Chesney. This guy was absolutely immense in Poland's final qualification match against Wales in the playoffs. Many crucial saves along with winning the penalty shootout. Not to mention he has proved his class over the many years he has been a footballer. He could be the reason why Poland make it out of this very tough group. For the center trio, I'll be taking Van Dijk, Saliba, and Ake. Maybe debatable, De Ligt has been injured for some of the Euro qualifier campaign, but Ake has been making more of an impact for the national team recently. And Deschamps might disagree with my Saliba pick. He seems to be pretty public about his negative opinion on him, saying that there are some issues about him he doesn't like despite being one of the best center backs this season. And Van Dijk is brilliant. I don't think he needs much of an explanation. The midfield was extremely tricky to decide though, and I'm still not too confident about my picks. So many incredible midfielders for Austria but I'll be selecting Limer. He'll be paired up with De Young. And center attacking mid, I am taking Griezmann. Such an incredible, versatile attacker. I think he's one of France's best players right now. 
Left midfield, I'm going to be taking another Austrian center mid, but he is versatile, Sabitzer. And at right midfield, I'm going to be taking Simonski. Hasn't been in the best form at the moment, but he's still been having a great season at Fenerbahce. And then for that striker partnership, I will be going for Lewandowski, of course, along with Kylian Mbappe. Kylian Mbappe, one of the best players in the world right now, and Lewandowski, an absolute veteran at this point, who hasn't been getting the same numbers as before, but still an absolute class player. Group E now with Belgium, Ukraine, Slovakia, and Romania was one of the easiest combined 11s, I think, to decide. But with Courtois injured, that changes everything. He would easily be in that goalkeeper position, but with him gone, I gotta choose a Ukrainian player. And they've been rotating their keepers as well. They have two very solid options, Trubin and Lunin on Real Madrid. Lunin did just play in the last two playoff matches, which granted Ukraine this Euro spot, but Trubin also contributed as well. I'm, I don't know. I'm torn, but I'm gonna select Trubin. Perfect opportunity, I think, for that back line to utilize Slovakia and Romania. Of course, you gotta throw in Dragush in there. Tottenham's new signing, a massive reason why Romania were able to have so many clean sheets in those Euro qualifiers. But then the other two, I'm gonna be selecting Slovakians. I'll be going with Hansko and Skriniar. Hansko being one of the best defenders in the Eredivisie. And Skriniar has been injured for some time, but he looks to be hopeful to make a return before the tournament. For those central midfielders, I'll be taking Lobotka on Slovakia and Stanci on Romania. Obviously, I'm still saving my Belgian picks, and for center attacking mid, I'm choosing one of their best, actually, no, sorry, their best player, Kevin De Bruyne. At left midfield, I'll be taking one of Belgium's most electric players, Jeremy Doku, and on the right, I'll be taking Ukraine's Tsigankov. Yamalenko used to be one of the most important players on the national team, and Tsigankov very much took over his role beautifully. I feel bad leaving out the likes of Zinchenko, obviously, he is an immense player, but his form hasn't been the same lately, and he actually got benched in their last playoff match against Iceland. 100% a class player, but I just think Tsigankov makes it over him for now, considering we are limited on how many players we can select per country. So for that striker partnership, I'll be going with Belgium's top goal scorer, of course, Lukaku, and he'll be paired up with the Ukrainian gem, Dovbik, who is also club teammates with Tsigankov. His rise has been immense with 19 direct goal contributions in 27 matches. Obviously, there are a lot of other upcoming players that I missed out on. Sulikov, for example, has been brilliant for Ukraine, along with many other Belgian youngsters that have been on the rise. So let me know, should one of them have made it instead? In the final group, we're looking at Group F with Portugal, Georgia, Czech Republic, and Turkey. This one was an absolute headache to figure out as well with the rule I've given myself. This would be mostly a Portuguese 11 if I didn't give myself this rule. And we're going to be leaving out some massive players from this team in order to utilize the best out of the other nations. Goalkeeper, perfect opportunity to use one of the Georgian slots, Marmadashvili. Nine clean sheets so far in La Liga this season for Valencia. His market value has risen to a big extent. He is one of the most valuable goalkeepers at the moment. 10 million under the most valuable one, Diago Costa, who could have been a selection on this team, but I really think we should save our Portugal picks for later. For my first center back, I will be using one of my Portugal picks. I'll be going for Ruben Diaz. But the other will be from Turkey, which could cost me later on. It's going to be Bardacki. At left back, I'll be taking another Turkish player. This guy definitely deserves to be on this team. It will be Kadioglu, one of Turkey's best performing players at the moment, I'd say. For right back, although his position on the national team is slightly hazy right now, I'll still be taking Tufal from Czech Republic. He was caught clubbing the night before a massive match in the Euro qualifiers. So he was immediately sent home and... His position remains in question, but I think for the purpose of this combined 11 video, he should stay on this team. We'll see if he ends up playing at the Euro tournament. Now for the midfielders, this is where I am extremely torn. For sure, let's just get this one out of the way. Czech Republic, Suchek, definitely a solid pick. Redeemed himself recently at West Ham after his quite poor form. Definitely one of the national team's strongest players. My other pick will be Bruno Fernandes. It's not his fault he's on a struggling United squad. He's a fantastic player and does come in clutch for the Portugal national team. But for that last midfield spot, it's extremely tough to pick because Chalahonglu has been absolutely immense for Inter Milan. But for the Turkish national team, he does not always pull through. And a lot of people are now excited for the likes of Arda Guler, who obviously still has to prove himself, but without a doubt is one of their brightest future stars at the moment. I'm going to be selecting Arda Guler instead of Chalahonglu. I want to select them both, maybe put Arda Guler at right wing, but we are limited in spots. Instead of him at right wing, I will be taking Bernardo Silva, which means there's no room for Rafael Leao or Cristiano Ronaldo since I have now used all my Portugal spots. Perfect opportunity to take Georgia's best player on the left wing, Kvica Kvaratskhelia. Despite not getting as electric of numbers compared to last season for Napoli, he is still a phenomenal player. Now for the striker role, we only can select a Georgia or Czech Republic player, and I'll be choosing Czech Republic as Patrick Schick 
was one of the best players in the last Euro tournament. Despite some injury setbacks, he has still been proving his class recently as well, so I'll be taking him. Feels weird to leave out the likes of Ronaldo and Liao. I know a lot of people are going to find this team weird. Anyway, those are all of my combined 11s for each of the Euro groups. Quite a tough one to plan out, so even if you have some disagreements, please don't forget to drop that like, and let me know what you want to see next on the channel as well. Take care. Lock and watch.